Uh, everybody. Lovely. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, very excited to be zooming into your uh, homes this evening. I hope everybody's really um, safe and, and well and um, those in lockdown are, are managing as best they can. Um, we've all probably noticed that everyone's eating a little bit more. I think my shopping bill um, is uh, gone up a little bit, just uh, noticing this week. So um, we are going to do a snacks class um, and we have some gorgeous consultants on with us tonight. My name is Janine Burns. I'm one of the team leaders on the Northern Beaches. And we have um, a few of the other teams as well all joining in. And that's one of the lovely things about being a Thermomix consultant is it's your own business. So you decide how much or how little you want to put into it. But you have that, um, you know, beautiful community spirit and, and support of being in a team. Um, and the generosity of spirit is, um, you know, ever present tonight. These ladies are, um, you know, coming into your lounge rooms to or your kitchens to share some um, inspiration with you. We all need snacks in our lives and snacks can look all sorts of different things. They can be healthy. They can be uh, a little bit, little bit naughty and everything in between. So a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to uh, keep everyone on mute tonight, but if you have any questions at all, please pop those in the chat. Uh, we have the lovely Anne-Marie who is um, looking after the chat for us this evening and she will make sure she flags any questions for you. Um, also at the end of the class, we uh, all the consultants will stay on. So if you had any questions that you actually want to come off mute and have a, you know, ask us in person, or um, we also might play a little video and show you um, a little video about joining the business. So if that, you know, piques your interest at all, we'd love you to hang around and, um, and, and join that with us. So we have, uh, what I'll do is I'll let the girls introduce you as we go through and, um, and they'll introduce their dishes to you. But we have uh, a collection, ham and cheese, quinoa muffins, Thai chicken balls. Um, Betty's going to do some shoe pastry with custard and pikelets, Anzac cookies, a really beautiful fresh muesli. Um, chicken pies and a few other things that we're going to share with you as well. So some of the things we've pre-made and some of them we're actually going to make with you tonight. So um, enjoy the ride and uh, don't forget you can hop into that um, uh, chat box anytime you like. So Anne-Marie is going to add a spotlight and that is going to be on my Thermomix. So I'm using the TM6 tonight. Um, I think I looked at the registrations. We don't have anybody on here who doesn't have a Thermomix. If you don't have a Thermomix, could you just pop that in the chat box just so that we know? Um, but so what I've done is I've made up a little collection. So have you spotted spotlighted both, Anne-Marie? I can't see from my end. Sorry, it just moved, but I will do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone in and I've made a little collection and I've called it a snack class. So we all know that we can um, go into Cookie Do and Anthea is going to run through that a little bit with us later on and just show you how to, you know, make sure you're getting the most from Cookie Do and especially the shopping list. Um, so I've popped all my recipes in there. Am I spotlighted now? Is my screen there? It won't hold. What about maybe if I try and do it? I just can't. Yeah, if you can find it. It's it just, um, it's just. Yeah, you know what? I had this problem me. the other day. Oh, maybe, um, maybe what we'll just do spotlight. Found it, found it. Cool. Found it. Okay. So we've got the ham and cheese quinoa muffins. I did do, do a little bit of prep already because I cooked the um, quinoa. So I've got my oven on. I've got, I'm using the beautiful rose gold um, mix shop tray today I'm not using silicon molds and uh, the first thing we're going to do is pop in a hundred grams of cheese into the bowl so you can't see that but I've just got some cheddar cheese and I've got some I think if I press next we've got some parmesan so I put both of those in there 
and then we just press next. Insert our measuring cup into the lid. So I'm just gonna chop this for 10 seconds on speed nine and it's gonna make a little bit of noise. So it's gonna mute me down. Okay. Now we are all chopping our own cheeses, aren't we? One of the easiest things that you can do in your Thermomix. Um, I don't know, can I, can we see that there? No, I don't think we can, no. Um, all pre-grated cheeses out of the supermarket have anti-caking agents in them. So uh, of course, if you can just be chopping your own cheese, and if I'm doing pizzas, you know, you can grab a kilo of cheese, roughly chop it into, you know, squares, throw a handful in, blitz it on speed eight, um, and then you end up with a nice big container. You can pop that in the freezer and that will keep your cheese really dry uh, because the anti-caking agents, you know, I looked at them one day just to see what was in there and it's either refined wood pulp or aluminium. So definitely be chopping your own cheese. So transfer into bowl, set that aside. I have done that. So now what it's gonna ask me to do is um, cook the quinoa, but I've actually pre-prepared the quinoa so we can skip that step because that's um, not going to be very interesting. So 20 minutes of cooking time. There's a little video there to show you that you can, uh, how to use your spatula to get the basket out of your, uh, thermomix and then that way you're not going to be you know burning your little fingers when you're cooking rice or anything like that uh, so we can see that yeah not too bad all right um, we'll just finish that off so remove the basket and pop the quinoa aside rinse and uh, dry the mixing bowl so now what we're going in is three sprigs of flat leaf parsley pop that into the bowl press next Two spring onions, straight in there. And insert our measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid. Now this recipe really lends itself to all sorts of variations. So we'll give that a quick chop. Okay, scrape down the sides of the mixing bowl. So I was a little bit generous. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pop the lid back on, use my little back arrow there, and I'm actually just going to chop that again because like most recipes, um, we like our food really flavoursome. So don't be shy to, you know, beef up those extra flavours or herbs or spices in your recipes. Okay, scrape down sides of mixing bowl. Now we're going to pop in 130 grams of zucchini into the bowl. Uh, so you can see, I, I can't count, it's 140. Pop our measuring cup on. Hit next and we're just going to chop that for three seconds. Scrape down sides, we've got 100 grams of ham. So again, I'm probably a little bit generous. And press next, two eggs straight into the bowl. Gotta love this guy to cooking. Two egg whites going in. Press next, a pinch of salt. Now I like to use this, um, it's called Tuscan seasoning. Can't see where the thing is. There it is there. So it's basic rosemary, garlic, salt and pepper. Um, so I just throw a little bit of that in there, just kind of gives a little bit of extra flavor. Pepper, that's in there as well. The reserved cheese goes straight back into the bowl. Press next, the reserved quinoa. So that has, um, can I just show you that there? So that's been cooked up uh, probably about an hour ago. Um, super easy to cook quinoa in your bowl. And I must admit the first time I made it, I thought, oh, that's all going to, um, 
end up in the bowl. Oh gosh, I made a mess there, didn't I? Let's get that up. That's okay. All right, reserve quinoa in there, pop in our mixing bowl, pop on the lid and then press next. So it's popped itself into reverse and we're just going to give that a mix for about 10 seconds. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to, Anne-Marie, if you wanna come back to me, please. We've got side by side anyway. Do you want me to get rid of the machine? Oh, okay. I didn't realise we were side by side. All right. Um, so there is our mixture. Uh, so what I'm going to do is pop that into my rose gold muffin tin. So I don't think we need to stand there and watch that. But with these, um, you know, you can really mix up the ingredients with this. I've made them, you know, if you've got roasted vegetables left over, you've got a couple of frankfurts hanging around, or if you wanted to use bacon, um, mushrooms, you know, just use the base of the mix with, um, and, you know, just swap out the ham and the cheese for, I wouldn't leave the cheese out, to be honest, because that makes them all beautiful and tasty. Uh, but yeah, you can certainly add other bits and pieces. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to pop this into the muffin tin, pop it in the oven. And what we are going to do now is we're going to head over to Anthea. And Anthea is making some beautiful little Thai chicken balls for us. Thanks, Anthea. Hello, and good evening, everyone. Oh, Have you found me? Awesome. Okay, so I'm making um, a recipe that's actually on recipe community. Um, so it's not going to be using the guided cooking, it's just going to be going from manual cooking. So um, pretty simple recipe, just putting it all together and we're going to cook it in the oven. So first of all, what I've got going into my thermix is just some garlic and some red chilli. I have taken the seeds out of this one because my kids are going to eat it. If it wasn't for them, I would definitely have left those seeds in. Totally up to you. A nice big handful of coriander leaves. So that's all going in there. I'm going to pop the lid on. And I'm just going to turn the dial to about speed five. And just chop those up nicely. And then the recipe actually asks for... Um, for minced chicken. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mince my own chicken. So you'll see how nicely chopped that is. I just took a nice big breath of that chili. Okay, I'm gonna pop this all down, scraping it down to the bottom of the bowl. Now to mince your own chicken, I put this in the freezer. So it's not completely frozen, it's just partially frozen. I'm gonna pop that all in. And we're going to use the turbo function. So just on the TM6, is in a different place to the TM5 and the TM31. I'm not sure if you can see that there. Still a bit of a glare. But I'm just going to find turbo. And when I get onto turbo, I'm going to select two seconds and then activate. I'm just going to do that again. And I'm just going to check see how mushed it is and that looks good to me so I'm just going to press my home to come out there and I'll just show you what that has done so it's just minced that chicken up really beautifully I'm now going to add the rest of the ingredients so what we've got going in here is I've got some red curry paste you can make your own I hadn't with this one red curry paste we've got fish sauce and oyster sauce these are so full of flavor We've got some um, flour, this is self-raising flour, and some coconut milk, all going in there. And we're gonna turbo this again, just to get all those nice ingredients mixed together. So we'll go back into our turbo. And again, I'm gonna do it for two seconds. And one more time. And let's have a look, that looks nicely mixed up. So I'm just gonna come out, take that lid off. And I'm just gonna pop this 
all into a bowl. I'm just going to bring it across here. So this is all going into my bowl. Just making sure it's all mixed together nicely. Now you can use any type of meat. This you can use pork. You can actually use fish. And mix up the flavors. If you don't like coriander, you don't have to put coriander in it. You can make it gluten free. I was using flour in here. You could use corn flour instead of the self raising. They won't puff as much, but you'll still get a nice result. Okay. So all we do now is we're going to make these into little balls. Now you can either wear gloves or whether it's about the right size, just taking it out of your fingers, mixing it into a nice little ball and popping it into a pre-greased muffin tray. So I'm just going to pop one in here and just keep going, fill the muffin tray. And these will simply go in the oven for about 10, 15 minutes, depending on your um, oven and they'll come out they're such an awesome snack for the kids full of protein full of flavor sort of thing they can just grab um, as soon as you've made them or you can keep them cold in the fridge and they can grab them from there so i'll pop these in the oven and if we come back to now i can show you the end result in a little while lovely thank you anthea i absolutely love little thai meatballs um they're so great for all you know entertaining if you're having drinks or something like that or you can make them bigger and turn them into a meal if you like or you know have on a have a beautiful salad so many different uses that you can do with those. cocktails Yum. okay so now we're going to head over to betty and we're going to be doing some shoe pastry uh, there she is there. Oh, spotlight Hi. you. There you go. Hi, Betty. Hi, hi, hi everyone. I'm going to make shoe pastry tonight. Um, if anyone of you have made actually on the stove before, you would really want to make it on the TM6 or um, TM5 or your TM because it's just so much easier than slaving over the stove stirring it really fast, making sure that it's all stirred well. Um, I've made most of it already i've pre-made the shoe pastry um, and i've popped them into two tall plastic cups and then put the piping bag in it's the easiest way to actually get the um, shoe pastry into a piping bag for piping and i've organized it to have one that are piping tip a star shaped piping tip and one just in a bag on its own so you can see that you don't have to have a piping tip to do this but if you have a piping tip your shoe pastry will look more um, pretty but um, it all works and um, the only tip that I have for this recipe is that I would add in a little bit of vanilla just to make it have a better fragrance which I did do today and this is the way that my kids actually do prefer it I'm just going to tip my camera down so you can see me piping away. It's actually quite easy. Let me do the one with the star piping tip first. You don't need them really big. You just sort of go around, go down, and then pull up. Go around, pull up. Nice. Betty, how much vanilla did you um did you add in there? Was it vanilla bean paste or was it vanilla essence or what did you? It was, use? It was vanilla essence and it's about um, a teaspoon, not a lot, just a just a dash of it, just to get the nice fragrance. So yeah. these are the star shaped ones. Or, I like to do that with my whipped cream, add a little bit of vanilla essence in there in, in the whipped cream. That's delicious as well. Oh, yes. Um, I've made, um, I've pre-made some cream patisserie or patisserie or cream <laughs> pet. <laughs> I, patissier, I think it was. I think Anne-Marie told us it was patissier. Patissier? It's the best custard I found that goes really well with um, creme pat. There we go. Easy. Creme, creme pat. There you go. So you can do them either way, um, with a star or just on its own, like a ball shape, and they'll come up beautiful in the oven. So I'll keep piping away, and um, I'll be back with the baked 
good in about 20 odd minutes. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with them. Um, okay. Maybe a quick question. So did you, you, you pre-made that dough? Did you have it in the fridge? Sorry, I missed that part. No, I just pre-made it about oh, 10 minutes early. It takes about 20 minutes to make. And it's mostly because there's some 10 minutes rest time for the... Um, pastry for the for the mixture to cool down before you add the egg in and the TM will do everything for you so it's actually really easy to do okay all right will you let us know when we need to come back to you cool all right thanks Betty that they looking very exciting I do love shoe pastry with especially with cream on the inside uh, now we're heading over to the lovely Nia she's going to introduce herself and Nia's making pikeless for us tonight um thanks Janine there you go evening everybody um thank you for joining us this evening and the team um I'm part of the Northern Beaches team as well with Anthea as my team leader um so I'm going to talk about pikelets now these are on regular rotation in our house um either for breakfast for morning tea after school whichever one it is um it's a very simple recipe and it's something that you can mix up very easily so um, I've just done the first step, which was just to melt 20 grams of butter. And I've just melted that for 30 seconds. Now, I actually did it again because it's quite cold in my kitchen tonight. Um, so it didn't melt as well as it can do. Um, so it depends on the time of year when you're making them. So I put that, just repeated that step once more. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next step, asking for 140 grams of self-raising flour. Um, and when I grew up as a child, these were called Scotch pancakes where I came from. It was exactly the same thing. It's a basic pancake mix, um, just in different proportions. Um, quarter of teaspoon of salt, that's going in there. Um, 30 grams of caster sugar. So there isn't an awful lot going in um, because this will make a good um, quantity of, of pikelets um, for the kids to enjoy. Half a teaspoon of bicarb. 150 grams of buttermilk. Now, I haven't got any buttermilk today, um, and very often I might not have it in, um, nor did I have the cream to make my own and make butter and things today. I'm just gonna use full fat milk, um, and I will often use that um, in the mix anyway. With buttermilk, it does make it really thick mixture, so sometimes you do need to add a little bit of milk just to water it down and make it go further. Um, but this works just as well. Um, but just as a tip, if you have got the little carton of buttermilk from the supermarket, it's about a pint, I think, um, there's exactly enough buttermilk there to make a portion of buttermilk scones and a portion of pikelets. So there you go, no waste. I'm just gonna pop that milk in. I can see there are lots of, a uh, few questions in the chat about the recipes. And I forgot to mention at the beginning of the class, so I will send out an email tomorrow and that will include all the links for the recipe and Anne-Marie's popping them up as well. Um, and we're also gonna include a, another list of our, our favorite snacks that we wanna make as well. So keep an eye on your email to, late tomorrow and, and that will be there. Sorry, Nia, back to you. That's all right. The only other thing I've done is add an egg, um, the final step to the mixture. Um, and then I'm literally going to mix this for 20 seconds, um, just on speed five. So I'm going to get that to go. Um, with pikelets, you can make them as um, healthy or as naughty as you like. Um, and there are different recipes on Cookie Do. Um, there's a toddler collection that has a pikelet with oats in that you milk up front before you add the rest of the mixture. Um, and you can add banana in and chia seeds. And they're a really delicious, um, healthy version. Um, you can also do the naughty versions, and I'm going to show you one of those just now. Um, so it's now asking me um, to go over to the cooker. So just give me one second. I'm going to take you with me. There we go. I can't see how dirty my oven top is. Anyway, there we go. There's my mix. Now, I don't know if some of you have seen recently in McDonald's, um, they had something called McDonald's hotcakes, um, Nutella hotcakes, in fact. 
And this is basically a pikelet with Nutella in. Um, so, again, I haven't made my own today. This is Nutella. Um, I do have the piping bag, which I'll come to in my next recipe. Um, but for the purposes of this, you can literally just use a plastic bag. That's just a teaspoon of Nutella. That's all you need. Um, and I've just pushed it into the corner of a plastic bag. And I'm just going to cut the end off, which gives me that instant um, piping bag. And I'm going to pipe these into the middle of our pikelets. Oh, I've just heard my daughter arrive. Isn't that funny? She must have smelt them. Right. So I've just got my pan. I've actually got it quite hot at the moment, but you need about a medium heat. When I cook them um, for the kids, because they eat them so quickly, um, I've just got one of these hot plates from Aldi. It just sits on top of my hob. I can do six pikelets at a time. Um, so that just keeps the, uh, the starving masses um, at bay. So I'm just gonna pour a couple here for you in the pan. And the key tip to making pikelets, when they start bubbling, it's time to turn them over. That's all you need to know. So I've just done three there. Um, can you see there? Yeah. So I'm just going to let that take some heat. As that's starting to take some heat there, I'm just going to squirt a bit of the Nutella on top because it would be rude not to. I was you, Nia. That totally rude not to put Nutella in there right at this moment. <laughs> and you can tell how cold my kitchen is because it's actually quite solid. <laughs> oh, I think I've got somebody to do a taste test. That's lucky. Funny how they come running when there's action in the kitchen. Is everybody noticing their kids are eating a little bit more at the moment? I think we're, um, or everybody is, we're, we're breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, every single meal is in the house at the moment. Now, I don't know if you, sorry, Janine. Um, I don't know if you can see there, it's starting to bubble up on the surface. Um, so that's telling me it's time to turn them over. Just a fish slice, lift it up, turn them over. I'm sure you all know how to toss a pancake. Whoops, that one stuck to the side a bit. And over they go. And there you can see, they're browning beautifully. Um, and there's a lovely chunk of Nutella in the middle there um, that I think somebody might be about to have for dessert. So um, come back to me a bit later and um, I've got another couple of snacks I'd like to share with you, if that's okay. Lovely. We'd, we'd love to see what else you've uh, got been cooking up in your kitchen. You're always showing us little delights and tempting us now. I know. I know. We've got a Thermomix. <laughs> you should get one. Honestly, they're brilliant. Uh, oh, too funny. Okay, <laughs> now we're heading over to Ellen. And I can't actually see Ellen. Anne-Marie, can you see Ellen at the moment? Lovely. If you want to spotlight her, Ellen's going to introduce herself and make some Anzac cookies with us. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Mia, can you drop some down to me tomorrow, please? They look so good. Um, I actually make those healthy version of the pikelets that you were talking about, the oat and banana ones. They are a really great snack. And I make them quite small, so they're only about, you know, a tablespoon size. I've got young, a four and a two-year-old, and they're just the perfect breakfast, awesome meal with a little bit of butter. They're really great. And I actually store them in the freezer. They make a big batch. And I store them in the freezer and they have a couple here and there. So they're great pikelets. Today I'm going to be doing a batch of Anzac biscuits um, on the non-healthy side of our recipes tonight. Um, so I've had in here, I've already had our butter and our golden syrup, which I've melted. So that's melted. Now I'm just going to add a teaspoon of bicarb soda. That's in. Press next. Place our measuring cup and mix in Lid on and speed three. Okay, that's done. <clears throat> now it's asking me to add the rolled oats. I'm going to pop that in. The grams. 
Then I'm going to put in 150 of plain flour. Now you could use gluten-free flour or spelt flour if you wanted to make it a little bit healthier, whatever so it works for you. Um, in terms of if you wanted to make this dairy-free, you could easily use a dairy-free or a nut-based butter. I did that the other week and it's totally fine. They still taste just as good. So then we're adding the light brown sugar. I always add just less. I don't know why I just do it just to be a little bit healthier. Um, and then the desiccated coconut. I got a bit um, poor happy the other day when I was making a batch of these. And rather than the 50 grams, I added about 100 grams. They still tasted great. And there was not an excess of coconut, so don't worry too much. Um, then we're gonna pop the lid on and put it all together. Great, that's it, they're ready. Now all we have to do, I've already got my oven on. I'm gonna simply show you how well that's all mixed together. And I'm going to literally get a teaspoon or a tablespoon, sorry, and pop that mixture. I'll just move you over here a little bit so you can see onto my, my thermo mat. These are the best buy. If you do not have one of these already, do yourself a favor and get the duo, the, the two, thermo um, silicon mats they are so good for baking and they're great for the environment because you're not reusing baking paper all the time so i'm going to do a few of these um, you can change up the size but however you want small big it says to do them with a five centimeter diameter once flattened out clearly that is not five centimeters um, so i'll make some of them a bit bigger and some of them a bit smaller then i'm going to pop them in the oven and they're going to cook for how long this begin? Nine to 12 minutes, 160 degrees, and they'll be ready to go. So I'll come back and show you those at the end. But before I do, I wanted to also show you these amazing apricot bites. These are apricot, coconut, and pitted dates. And you literally mix them in your thermomix for, I think it's about, I can't even remember how many seconds it is, but it's within a minute. Put them in the fridge, packed nice and, you know, nice and compact into a loaf tin refrigerate them for a bit over an hour and then you just cut them into little bite-sized pieces cover them in some more coconut and you've got a great healthy snack that kids love and it's that little bit of extra fiber too so come back soon and um and i can show you some pre some cooked um antec biscuits lovely thank you ellen thank okay you what I love about those Anzac cookies is I like to make some uh, a little bit thinner and because they can go really crunchy um, and if you make them if you make them thinner and larger they kind of go a little bit chewy as well so you can kind of get all those different textures and keep everybody happy because I know some of us like you know traditional cookie um, I like mine to be a little bit chewy but I like the edges to be crunchy so I actually even slightly burn them on the edges just to get that you know, really delicious crunch going. So, um, all right. One of the things that I'm making tonight, and this is something that I've been making for 11 years since I bought my Thermomix. Um, and honestly, it just never gets old. You can use it as a, it's like a fresh muesli. So it's called Kada or on Cookie Do, it's called the two second muesli. And it literally is cater. So coconut, apple, dates, and almonds. You've got four ingredients and, um, and, and it takes two seconds to give it a chop and depends how fine you like it. Um, you can have this, it's beautiful with a dollop of yogurt. Um, lots of people have it for breakfast, to be honest. I actually like to have it as an afternoon snack because it's got that, um, it's got a little bit of sweet from the dates, but also uh, a little bit of fat from the nuts. So I find it quite satisfying and, and it keeps me going till, you know, well, well into dinner time. And I'm not reaching for kind of chocolate and, and things like that. I've got um, two sons in their early 20s, tradies, and they like to take it, they have it as morning tea. Um, and then that keeps them going to lunch. So I'm going to go back into my Thermomix. So Anne-Marie, if you might be able to just pop uh, both screens up, if that's possible. So I've popped all these recipes in. We don't want to go into my week. We'll go into my recipes, into created collections, and I've got my snacks class down here. 
So here is our two second muesli down the bottom. So we just tap on there and then we can press start cooking. Really, this one does not need a uh, recipe, to be honest, but we'll, we'll, we'll indulge the guided cooking tonight. Okay, so 80 grams of fresh coconut. I'm just using organic shaved coconut. Um, and really, you can vary this up to the amount that you want. You could use 40 grams of all the ingredients. You can use 80, 60, whatever you like. But generally, um, so what have I got there? I'm going with about 50. Then I press next. So I've got one green apple just cut into chunks. I'm going to pop that into the bowl. I find this one is really nice with the green apple because it kind of gives that little bit of tart because um, I use uh, medjool dates and they are a little bit different to kind of like the normal dates that you buy in the um, bakery section of the supermarket. These ones are super sweet. So four pitted dates, that goes in there. Then we press next. So uh, 10 almonds, I've got way more than 10 almonds. Because the dates are quite sweet, I find it really can carry extra, extra almonds. So I'm gonna pop those in, insert our measuring cup into the bowl. Honestly, this is embarrassing, it's so fast, this one. So now we're using our turbo function. So it's pulled up two seconds, it's activated the speed dial and I just turn this dial and it's going to make quite a racket for two seconds. Okay, now what I might do is just um, have a little look and, and see what that looks like. Actually, that looks kind of perfect to me. Didn't put my measuring cup in properly. Uh, so there is our cater there. So I can't tell you how... Um, delicious this is it, it's just kind of got that it's got a little bit of richness to it um, the nuts are beautiful you could use whatever coconut that you have if you wanted to swap out the dates for um, apricots or you know your kids really love cranberries or something like that um, you could swap those out but um, I've got to I've got to have a little taste I'm sorry that I can't share it with you but mm. Oh, it's just sweet, it's tart, it's got the coconut, the nuts. It's uh, really delicious. So, and that will store in the fridge for probably about two days. Because of the um, solid and steel on the blades, it doesn't oxidize the apple as quick as um, anything else would normally. Okay, so CADA, C-A-D-A. -A. Um, Anne-Marie's popped it up there. Beautiful fresh muesli, honestly, such a great little snack. So now we are heading, where are we going? We're going back to Nia. Are you ready to go, Nia? I am indeed. Okay, lovely. Let's go back to Nia. So um, just to finish off the pikelets, uh, they're gone. They've been eaten, um, the three that I made. Um, I've got that container full. Um, it normally makes around 15 or so pikelets. I made quite big ones there, so I'll probably get about a dozen um, out of that recipe. Uh, that's going into the fridge until the morning, um, and then the kids can have those at morning tea in the middle of homeschooling tomorrow. Um, so that's a great recipe. Um, the one thing that baffles me on cookie do, um, it says the recipe takes 35 minutes, which it clearly doesn't, but I think that's allowing for you cooking them one by one by one. Um, so it really is a quick recipe. Don't be put off by that. Um, recommend it highly. Um, now, the other two recipes I'm going to talk about, I've actually pre-made. Um, and the reason I've pre-made these, um, because I was saving um, and utilising the food I had left. Um, I made hollandaise sauce a couple of days ago um, to make eggs benedict for breakfast. And in using that recipe, you use four egg yolks. So I had four egg whites left. Um, the recipe I'm going to show you here, coconut macaroons. Um, there are a few different versions on cookie dew, and there are some that use condensed milk. Um, the one that I've got here is off an American collection, um, and it's literally just shredded coconut, uh, which you mill in the Thermomix. Um, you add the egg whites, you add sugar, 
um, a teaspoon of vanilla essence and then just a, a tiny tablespoon of water as well to bring it all together. Mix it all up um, and pop it in a piping bag. And um, I mentioned I was going to talk about this. So this is the Thermomix piping bag off the mix shop. I've had this for probably about two, three years. It's brilliant. It comes with two. This is the smaller one. There's a bigger bag as well. It's dishwasher proof. Um, so you can just keep recycling it, keep reusing it. It comes with a selection of different nozzles. Um, this is iced, I don't know how many birthday cakes. Um, so good tip there. Um, but these are my coconut macaroons and I use the piping bag just to pop them in, um, pipe them out. They look a bit like um, Betty's shoe buns actually, don't they, with the, the twirl on them. Um, and then you just cook them for about 15 minutes until they brown. And they're still quite soft in the middle, but crisp on the outside, which I absolutely love. Um, makes about, uh, it says, the recipe says 24. And I think that's if you're using um, really small ones. Um, I obviously like them bigger. Um, so I make about anywhere around 16 to 20 when I do this recipe. Um, great for the kids. Obviously, it has got sugar in, which um, is the only unhealthy part. But in terms of the coconut and stuff, delicious as a little side um, snack with a cup of coffee. Um, and it's great if you want to serve it with ice cream and a little bit of raspberry coolie as a dessert. That works really well as well. So that's my coconut macaroons. The other dish I wanted to share with you, um, and this is probably more of an adult dish, um, and it's a spiced nut mix. Um, all that we do is mill some spices. So you literally, it's salt, cumin seeds, dried chili, sesame seeds. So you mill those in the Thermomix and then you toast them um, for a couple of minutes just to, to let all those flavors come out. Um, you add an egg white. So that's where my fourth egg white went from the hollandaise sauce. So three went into the macaroons, one went into these. Um, and then you use a selection, whatever nuts that you happen to have at home. So today I've used peanuts, walnuts, pecans, uh, pistachios and cashews. That's what I had in. Oh, and almonds. Um, I actually made half the recipe today um, because I didn't want to be left with this whole tray full of nuts that I absolutely adore. I've been picking out all day. Um, you lay them out on a tray, you bake them for 20 minutes. Um, and when you lay them out, you lay them close together so that you, they end up in nice little clumps. So when you break them off, you've got these lovely little clumps that you can have um, and they make really nice spicy nut clusters. They're from a collection by Danny Belend um, on Cookie Doo. Um, but if you search nuts in the Cookie Doo search engine, um, it comes up with lots of different recipes. You can change this to suit yourself. This is obviously quite a spicy mix. You could go for an Indian mix with like fennel seeds and garam masala. You can do a more Mexican mix with a, like taco spices um, and paprika. Um, or you can kind of go that more sweeter version, particularly for the kids. Um, so I might add in things like cranberries and some chopped dates and apricots, a bit of cinnamon, a bit of maple syrup, um, and then the same process with the egg white. They are delicious, but so Moorish, I'm warning you. Um, a really good gift as well. Um, great at Christmas, particularly if you're doing something, say, for um, a dad or a brother or an uncle. It's a more male thing. Um, I'd grab a whole clump of these, pop them in a nice jar. Um, make some barbecue sauce, maybe some taco spices, just some of those lovely homemade gifts. So um, yeah, there's my offerings for tonight. And now I'm going to eat these. <laughs> That's awesome, Nia. I, um, I can't believe how beautiful those um, the macaroons. macaroons are. They And they just look so pretty when you make them. It, they're honestly absolutely divine. Every time I've made them, you know, People think you're really clever, but they're so quick and easy. They are. Um, they're my leftovers, spice, dude. Yeah. And the spice peanuts, so I've just popped in the chat. There's a beer and chili peanut brittle on Cookie Doo as well, which is um, I tend to make at Christmas time and uh, taking a leaf out of Nia's book, using it for gifts um, is really lovely as well. So have a look at those. Um, we're going to include some more. But what we're going to do, if um, Ellen's ready, we can go back to her Anzac cookies and the, and then we're going to uh, head over to Anthea. 
Thanks, Nia. Hi, everyone. Hi there. Okay, so I've just taken a couple of the Anzac biscuits out and shown you um, they're just cooling now on their wire rack. And um, yeah, they'll be gone probably as soon as they're seen tomorrow. Um, I've also been making this week, um, earlier in the week, I made some basic berry muffins, which we've got a video of um, how I made them. These are a really nutritious way of doing a muffin. First step, and then there's um, maples. Is there maple syrup in it? It's mostly honey. Oh, see, now I've had a blank of what's in it. Let me have a double check. So you've got sunflowers, pepitas, then you've got bananas, egg. Here we go. Um, your milk, which you can use any type of milk. This time I used almond milk because we've gone dairy free. Um, you've got 120 grams of honey. So it's very, you know, a lot of honey. Um, but lucky for me, my uncle has some bees. So I get my honey for free. Um, so that is the natural sweetener in these. They are very sweet, but delicious. You can also mix it up. Sometimes I add walnuts or whatever other nuts you've got in there if you don't have any nut allergies. And you'll see in that recipe, I've used frozen berries as well because for some of you, they're not that cheap. So um, it's fine to use the frozen berries. Just make sure at the end of the recipe, you don't over mix because the berries will break down. Um, and it also asks for wholemeal self-raising flour. I did not have any of that. So I just use normal self-raising flour. But as I said before, you can top and change anything you want in these recipes. And I also used the mini muffin tin that um, Anthea was cooking her meatballs in. So they're the perfect little snack size. Two of them did get burnt, but um, they are amazing. Really, really lovely snack. The other thing I've been really enjoying making is the donuts. Has anyone had the soft cinnamon donuts? You will never go back to Donut King again because you can make them. All you need, jump onto the mix shop, grab your donut tin and your pancake pan. Cup, cupcake pen, sorry, cupcake pen. These are amazing. Make sure that you give this a good spray and then just bake them. And they are so delicious, such a great snack. And you can cut the sugar in half in the actual donuts. And then you just sprinkle over to the top the cinnamon and um, sugar. It's a really great snack, really, really yummy. So that's it for me tonight, I think. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thanks, Ellen. I have to um, agree with you on the donuts. Oh, goodness, my oven's going off again. I'm going to drag out these muffins. But those, um, the donuts, seriously, I, I'm i not a really a donut person and, and I would never kind of, I don't know, deep fry donuts. It just wasn't something that I would do. But I, um, I had that pan and I thought I'm going to give them a go and they're baked. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. Oh, good. They are so good. Do yourself a favour, grab yourself a cupcake pen and the donut mould and it'll get you through lockdown and all those tired school afternoon cravings. We'll do it. Okay, quickly just going to show you. Here are the um, ham and cheese quinoa muffins. They've just come out of the oven. I can smell the bacon or the ham. I've got a nice uh, triple smoked ham to pop in there. Their taste smell absolutely delicious. So. I'll uh, plate a couple up. But meanwhile, we're going to head over to Anthea and she's going to do some really gorgeous looking chicken pies. Thanks, Anthea. No worries. Hi, everybody. So before we move on to the pies, um, I just want to show you the little chicken balls that I made because I'm just going to shout someone to kind of collect them. They've been asking me every five minutes, is it ready, is it ready? So I'm just going to show you those. Look how lovely they are. I'm serving it with some sweet chilli sauce. Um, if we were doing a cocktail party, you know, let's think back to how times used to be. Um, I had a few little cocktail sticks in there as well, and this will be a nice little hors d'oeuvre. But as it is, the kids are going to be watching it while they're watching the Eels game. So excuse me, I'm just going to mute myself. And <laughs> awesome. I just love that. Little meatballs with Thai chili sauce. Delish. Okay. And on to my next dish. So the next dish I'm going to make is um, some little mini chicken pies. So um, this recipe, there's quite a few steps in it for me to show you tonight, but I'm just going to talk you through how I got to this mixture, which is going to go into the pies. Um, so this is um, chicken, 
So I use chicken thigh. Um, chicken thigh is, it holds its shape better, but it's also got a lot more iron and more nutrients in it. So I do like to mix and match my um, chicken and use, try and get as much of the, um, the thigh. And the kids don't like it as much, but if I'm using it in a dish like this where they can't see it, it always works better. So um, this chicken is steamed in your steaming basket. You retain the liquid and you have some chicken stock, pa chop, stock paste in that liquid. Then you're gonna chop onion and garlic um, and some fresh parsley. Then you're making a little sauce with it. So you're gonna use the, some of the liquid from the cooking. You're gonna add some milk and you're adding some flour. So again, you can use corn flour instead of plain flour if you want to make it gluten-free, but always check your corn flour just to make sure it is gluten-free on the box first. Um, so then you end up with this really nice little mixture. Um, it comes together really well. You wanna call it before you start using it on your pastry. And I'm just gonna pull this down so you can see what I'm doing on the work surface here. So you can see the ends that I've got here. Um, so I just use frozen puff pastry. I use an eight centimeter cutter and I managed to get nine. It's always a mission to try and get the most out of it as you can have the less waste. I do roll that into a ball and roll it out afterwards and, and use that all up. But for now, what we've got here is these little rounds. What you do is you place just about one spoonful in the center of each of them. I'm just gonna do a couple for you now. You don't need to watch the whole thing. So I'll just do two. Also, with the topping one, you're going to brush it with a little bit of egg. Now, it's the egg side that goes down on top. Then we're going to grab a fork and we're just going to just get all of those bits together all the way around so it's nice and crimped and it holds it together. And then you brush it again with some more egg before it goes in the oven. Now, I don't think you need to see me do any more of these, but that gives you the idea. So you're literally popping it. I'll put this whole tray in my oven tray. I find it easier to do it on this mat so I can get around it and the tray's not in my way as I'm doing all of the forking of around the pastry. But what I wanna show you is some I made earlier. So here we have them. So see how they puff up really nicely. Um, my kids love these. So, you know, I always like to think I make a lot and then they'll save, but they never do. But you could keep these, you could actually um, freeze them at this stage. So if you freeze them at this stage, then you can just pop them in the oven from frozen. So if I ever got to the point where my kids didn't eat everything I made as I go, that's what I would do. Put them in, on a tray to start with. Once they're frozen, then you can pop them into a box, a container. <coughs> Um, and then from frozen, you'll obviously just pop them in the oven for that little bit longer than you do otherwise, but they would work brilliantly from frozen. So there we have um, the dishes I've made today, but also I just wanted to show you, I'm gonna see if it's ready. So I'm just going to show you this. I had a little bit of the mixture left over from the chicken balls. So I thought, well, I've got this puff pastry out. So what I did was I made one little pie and I made a sausage roll with the rest of it. So just when you've got puff pastry in the freezer, there is so much you can do with it on the snack side. So just, again, even these chicken um, pies, I could make those into sausage rolls with that filling as well. And if you haven't made the vegetarian sausage rolls from Cookie Do, it's again a must. There you go. And another tip, another big tip for um, snacking with kids, always have something like chopped up cucumbers, chopped up red peppers and chopped up carrots in the fridge. So when they're like, I'm hungry, they're not grabbing crisps or other snacks you don't want to have. You can just throw them at them with some, a nice little tub of hummus just to keep them going. There you go. Delish. The, uh, those sausage rolls, the vegetarian ones, really are absolutely divine. There's also a spiced beef rolls on Cookie Doo, which is um, very delicious as well. Um, so absolutely have a look at those. Um, I've got a whole list of recipes that I can um, share with you and I'll pop them um, in the email. Uh, but I might just quickly run through them. It, Anthea is just setting herself up. She's just going to spend two minutes running through um, Cookie Doo with you just to make sure you're getting the most from the shopping list. So the suggestions that I had were, you know, pizza pockets. You can stuff them with anything, leftover curry, bolognese, um, you know, ham and cheese, 
whatever you like, savory scones. Uh, oh, there's a scones recipe with a savory butter. Delicious. The banana oatmeal energy bars are unreal. Cheese and bacon rolls. The magic bean cake of the recipe community, legendary recipe. There's also a vanilla version done by um, one of the girls in Anthea's team. Um, and the vanilla version is absolutely to die for. Your kids are never going to know that they're having an extra protein hit with can can cannelloni beans. Um, a bit hard, bit of a tongue twister that one. Um, in their in their cake, you know, like um, and you could do like a nice cream cheese frosting if you want to. But I find both the magic bean cakes actually don't even need icing. Um, the sausage rolls, you know, banana bread with all its different variations. Throw in dates, cranberries, coconut. Um, you know, nuts if you wanted to pop some walnut, chopped up walnuts in there. <laughs> uh, bliss balls, any kind of bliss ball under the sun. Um, what I like to do is I like to freeze my bliss balls and then when I pull them out, it kind of feels like I'm having a caramel or something, you know, really delicious because uh, it's got that kind of little bit of chew factor. It just um, kind of tricks the brain and makes you think you're having something uh, extra special. The sweet corn and chili fritters on Cookie Doo are the absolute bomb. Um, I remember the first time I made them, I thought, oh, you know, corn fritters, we've all done corn fritters. These ones are next level. You absolutely have to have a look at those. Um, and of course, Brazilian cheese puffs are favorite. And if you type in um, snacks in Cookie Doo, if you select Australia, Canada, the UK and the USA, you will get 565 recipe suggestions. So make sure you're utilizing Cookie Doo. So are you there, Anthea? Are you able to do a little screen share with us on Cookie Doo? Here she comes. I certainly am. So um, the reason I want to show you Cookie Doo is because whilst we're in lockdown, and some of us are not wanting to go to the shops at all or we're just limiting our time at the shops. I just wanna make sure that everyone knows the, what Cookie Do can do for you in this space. So um, when I, so you can, first of all, you can plan your week. So you can plan all the, the meals that you're making and pop them all into your week. But then what you can do beyond that is add into your shopping. So I'm gonna clear my shopping list because I actually did go shopping and I've, I've actually, um, ticked everything off so it won't show any ingredients but I'm just going to add these in just to show you I'm going to add these two to my shopping list then I'm just going to have a quick look at my ingredients just check through it okay I don't need to order water obviously I'm going to go through um, I've got eggs already so you just go through your shopping list just checking that you are ordering what you want to be ordering because I am going to place an order with this shopping list directly with Woolworths. So I'm gonna add, we all need more toilet paper. There we go, let's pop that in. So you can see how you can build up your shopping list. So that's my shopping list here. Then we've got the order ingredients. Once you select that, it pops up with your choice of store. At the moment, our choice is Woolworths, so I'm gonna select that. And what it's done is it has selected ingredients matching my recipes and it's told me what I'm what it's what it's going to order for me now if I go through this and I go well actually that's not the flour that I usually get I'm going to swap that out it will bring up all the other options and let's just say I actually want a bigger bag so I'm going to go for that one I'll pop that in instead so that's how you'll go through and easily check what it is that you want to buy once you're happy that that's what you want to get all you do is add it to what was cut tells you how much it's going to cost Log into your account. I won't go through all of that now. And um, you can order to either have it home delivered or for pickup. So I just wanted to share that with you because I'm just gonna come out of this without going into the whole of how you go through Cookie Do because we do have some Cookie Do workshops if you need to know a little bit more. But I'm just gonna stop sharing. Um, the other thing is if you have um, the app, so all you need to do is download the Cookie Do app on your phone phone and you can then whatever you do on your computer screen will also go on to your phone so um, I tend to go to the shops myself because I'm not organized enough to plan ahead and I tick things off so Woolworths in Monaval is brilliant because you've got the little holder to put your phone on so I walk around with it on the holder and I'm ticking things off as I go so I'm in and out in the shops there's no mulling around thinking what do I need I've got it all there in out and done so just want to make sure that you all know that you've got access to cookie do um, if you 
didn't know, you just log into Cookie you create an account. The first time you use it, you get one month free. Then um, if you buy a Thermomix, a TM6, you get six months added onto that. If you're a TM5 user and you haven't bought a cook key yet, that's how you're going to access those recipes um, from Cookie Do on your Thermomix. And again, you'll get six months free with that. Thereafter, it's $49 per year, which is awesome when you get access to all of the recipes worldwide. And as new books come out, they all appear on there for you. So that's my very, very brief rundown of Cookie Do. I just wanted to make sure you all knew how you could make the most out of it. Absolutely. We all need, um, you know, Cookie Do is such a game changer. Um, so good to do that. Thanks, Anthea. What we're going to do now, we're just going to go back to Betty. We, um, I think Betty's the last one. I think we're, there's nobody else that we need to head back to. And uh, Betty's just going to show us what she's done um, with her little shoe pastry thing. So I'll try and remove myself. There we go. I'm back. So these guys stay in the oven for 20, 22 minutes at um, 200 degrees. They all came up standing up, but I've turned them all upside down so they have a breather. If you don't let them cool down, they will just sort of be flat and not be as pretty. So what I've done, um, I've let them cool down. They're now nice and quick and I can handle them. I have gone ahead and popped a little hole at the bottom. So this is the pointy part, the star ones. And this is the cream pad, which is this recipe, which and which we will share with you guys um, in the email tomorrow. So you just put the piping bag in, give it a good squeeze until it sort of comes out from the bottom like that. So it's nice and full. And you've got a shoe pastry full of custard. And to make it extra naughty, you can add some chocolate. Oh, here we go, a bit of chocolate. Yum. Yep. Chocolate so eclairs. Just dip it through. You can just pop it on your surfing plate. And if you want to, you can always add some sprinkle to make it prettier for your children. Or you can also fill that and with a little bit of Nutella. You can just give it a to well to make it prettier um so this is what i would do with the puff pastry and they do get eaten very very quickly um they would last till like tomorrow and if you need to you can reheat it in the oven again just to um crisp them up again but they never really last till tomorrow okay. um and while i'm here and i've got the cream pad i've pre-made a couple of um little tart pastries with um short pastry and a little tart tray. Um, this is so versatile, you can just fill up these little tartlets and decorate it with a little bit of peach. Oh, yum, a nice peach. And oh, look at that. That looks amazing. So, no kid would turn that down ever from being hungry after school when they're grumpy from homeschooling. So this is something that I make all the time as well. It is just um, the short pastry from Cookie Do and the same cream that I've used to fill the shoe pastry with. There you go. So but different types of snacks. <laughs> What a good it's lovely. I love the um I love the idea of the Nutella as well. I think that would be really delicious. But look how pretty those tarts look. Um, you know, so um so delicious. And I love the peach on the top. Beautiful. That's some Thank great you. ideas. Thank you, Betty. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're on the home stretch, people. Um we are. I'm going to show you quickly show you my um, ham and cheese quinoa, if I can get a spotlight. Okay, here we go. So, yep, here are the um, ham and cheese quinoa muffins. You know, uh, they're going to probably go into the fridge. I might have one or two now because I haven't had dinner yet. Um, and uh, they'll be a very great snack, or you know, lovely with lunch tomorrow. Uh, very satisfying little afternoon tea. You could make the mini ones if you want to, or you can, you know, do the jumbo ones. 
um, but I just use the regular regular tin tonight. But um, so look, that's about it from us. Uh, a big thank you to uh, Betty, Nia, Anthea, Ellen, and a very special thank you for Anne Marie because she's done a wonderful job in our chat tonight. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hang around now. So if you wanted to um, have a chat with us, we've got a little video that we wanted to show you. If, um, if you're thinking that you might like to join the team and, you know, enjoy this beautiful camaraderie and um, very generous uh, spirit that we enjoy as a, as a community with Thermomix, please um, hang around, ask some questions, and we'll show you a little two-minute video. It's just going to give you a snippet of what it's all about. But thank you for having us in your homes this evening. I hope everyone stays really safe, really well. And um, for those in lockdown, let's hope we're out very soon. But um, keep uh, Thermomix and, and happy cooking. Janine, can you just open up one of your muffins, please? We've had a request. Oh, yes. And my husband said that, you know, you can, um, of course, he's sitting in the background giving me uh, <laughs> instructions. Um, you know, you can hide the zucchini from your kids. You could chop it a little bit finer if you wanted to. Um, and, you know, I mean, if you wanted to put sweet potato in there, you could do all sorts of things. They, they really do lend themselves to... Um, using up ingredients that you've already got in the house, a little bit of leftovers from the night before. So um, yeah, they really, really are delicious. So thanks guys. Great, thanks Janine, I'm gonna sign off. Okay, thanks so much Marie, and Marie, I really no appreciate worries. your time All tonight. Good. You did a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. See ya. Bye everyone. Bye. Okay, I think I can sign off on this one. Did anybody want to come off mute and have a little chat with us? There's lots of thank yous in there. Appreciate your time, everybody. Uh, fabulous class, thank you so much, Jane. We hope you got some good snack ideas. We, we, I think we did about 10 or 11, 12 things there. So hope you've got lots of uh, inspiration. Anybody want to come and have a chat with us? Anyone to come off mute? You'll have to unmute yourselves. That's the only thing. Hey, Nessie, thanks for coming on. Sabrina, catch you soon. Who else do we have? Debbie. No, nope. looks like no one's got any questions for us tonight, girls. Okay, I can't wait to make those um, pies, Anthea. Uh, look, I'm just doing them now. They're so quick once you've done right. the, the filling. Yeah, they look great. Yeah. And you can play around with the flavours as well. Oh, totally. And you can, you know, like a nice chicken and leek, put some yeah. carrot in there, whatever. The other way I'm doing.